In my last video I did a controller for a DC brushed motor. At some point I'd like to do a controller for a three phase motor like this one which is an electric bike hub motor. Uh, so I went online to take a look and see if I could just get one of these wheels uh, as cheap as possible with a with a hub because uh, I don't like spending too much money and uh, the, all I could find was uh, the wheel but with a kit of uh, parts to actually put together on, onto a standard bike to make it into an electric bike uh, all but the batteries that is. So I thought I'd get it because it's only £130 and I could fit it to a bike and have an electric bike whilst I'm actually working on a controller for the three phase motor. So in this video I'll fit it to what I'm currently using as a static exercise bike which I'm, I've got my Raspberry Pi exercise bike project on which is in the previous video. Um, but I'll go through what's in what came with the kit. So as you saw earlier there's the wheel, the hub motor and it came with the tyre as well. And uh, then I've got a box of other bits. Uh, so I've got this which connects the controller to the battery pack. I've got some cable tidying stuff for, for wrapping around cables. This bag which um, can go around the frame and it's supposed to hold the battery pack in so whatever batteries you decide to run run it with. I've got the controller itself with all the wires that come out the end. Uh, got some instructions which are actually quite good. They're actually, considering it's straight from China, uh, they, they're quite good instructions. Uh, then the brake levers, uh, front and back, and they've got um, the wires that come out to indicate to the controller when the brakes have been pressed so the controller knows to cut off the, the voltage to the motor. Got a um, th thumb, thumb throttle, so it's got an on-off switch. There, and then the thumb throttle itself, which fits on the handlebars. Got a uh, cadence sensor, so it's just like a Hall effect sensor. And then this goes around, it's uh, a disc with magnets in, this goes around the pedals and as they rotate it can pick up and, de and detect your pedaling. Uh, this is the wire which actually connects to your battery pack, so these terminals connect to your battery pack and then this the, the actual controller plugs in there. Got some handlebar grips which I won't be using because I prefer my own. Uh, some cable ties and then this kind of bungee cord thing which I'm not really sure what it's meant for. Uh, but I can't see myself using that. It's not mentioned in the instructions either. So the order in which I intend to do this is fit the front wheel first because if that doesn't fit then there's no point in doing anything else. Uh, then on the back rack I'm going to put the controller and I'm going to fix that uh, using a couple of M4 screws and nuts. Uh, then I'll go to the front handlebars and I'll fit the items on there. Uh, and then finally I'll fit the cadence sensor down at the bottom. So first take the front wheel off using a quick release uh, but this is a different um, front forks than the standard one, so I actually have to unscrew this fully. Next, I have to transfer the uh, brake disc over onto the new wheel by undoing the out the screws so the disc goes on the left side of the bike so the wheel rotates this way and uh, a little arrow on the disc which shows which direction it rotates in. So that goes on and then the, this came off of the hub which is should spread the load I think on top and then the screws go in. Just pass the cables through. That should go over the top of the cap, plastic cap and the bolt hopefully. 
I need to pass that on top of as well as well. And then screw the screws in. Tighten them down with the uh, Allen key. And probably best to use the usual tightening method where you do opposites and then you go kind of diagonal. And progressive, progressively tighten like this in this way to spread the load as you tighten until it's all, all the way down. So, fitting the front wheel, I came across the first problem. Uh, I thought that it was probably going to be not too, it was either going to fit or not, uh, but I had a bit of an issue. So this, the uh, actual spindle that they give on the actual wheel, it's quite chunky, which is a good thing because obviously you want it to be able to handle the one kilowatt power. Uh, but the actual inset in my forks for the uh, for the spindle wasn't quite, it had sort of a, a less of a radius at the back. So I had to actually use a Dremel just to make the radius a bit, a bit, um, bigger at the back of the of the front forks in order for the spindle to fit in adequately enough. Well, the forks I've got, they're not the original on the bike, but they are quite chunky, so hopefully they should should be okay. I don't recommend modifying the actual forks themselves. You don't want to, um, you don't want to compromise the integrity of the, uh, the actual forks. Also, um, so these these uh, washers, uh, originally they were the, the other way around, so on this side I've had to um, take the take this uh, housing off of this this connector in order to swap them swap them around because I think there's better this way around where this tag can actually fit better into that recess when this goes on foot first rather than the the plane washer also I've had to cut away a bit of each edge of this in order to for it to actually fit in here as well but lucky enough I didn't on this other washer I didn't have to cut away any of that because that actually First washer sits in the recess, and then this washer actually pushes on top of it, uh, and then the actual nut itself will go on top of there as well. And then just uh, tight, tighten that right down, make sure it's absolutely firm and secure. In the instructions, it says that one of the most important things is to make sure that these are tightened right firmly down because of the amount of torque that the the motor generates. So a couple of things whilst fitting the front wheel. Um, it's, I found it easiest to actually remove the caliper because uh, it was get is difficult to fit, fit in the disc and the wheel in whilst the caliper was uh, set in there. Uh, so I'll, now I've fitted the wheel, I'll fit the caliper back on. Also, there's a little cutout here on on the on the spindle here where it should point up upwards on the forks because the the cable will go up that way, uh, and that the lid will fit over there where the actual recess is. And that's really important. You don't want it fit slotting out the other way because you put too much strain on the cable if you try and bend the cable over where there isn't a recess. So I'm going to drill a couple four millimeter holes on my uh, back rack in order to fit the driving module. So the motor driver is now mounted uh, with a couple of uh, locking nuts, M4, uh, securing it at both ends and the cables coming through the gaps at the end as well. I'll probably need to wrap something around there to stop them chafing or anything against the aluminium.
So I don't film fitting the items onto the handlebars because when you do it, you have to move things around uh, and adjust the angles of things just to make sure that everything is uh, works and clears it clears itself, like changing the gears and pulling a handbrake cable, making sure no cables foul um, against each other. So it takes a while just to swap things around uh, and, and actually fit them, but they all fit fine. Uh, this is uh, some switches, nothing to do with the e-bike kit. This is for future use for me. Um, then with the gear changes, both the gear changes, because the brake levers used to be on the gear changes, I had to use a, a Dremel just to cut them off because I didn't want two brake levers uh, and I needed gear changes, or at least I wanted to be able to uh, change gear as normal. Um, uh, unfortunately, I didn't have room after putting everything on to fit my bar ends, which is a shame because I quite like those. Uh, they're quite nice to use, but uh, it's not it's not too bad because the one kilowatt motor should uh, make up for them uh, plenty. Uh, there's my 30 year old uh, bike computer, which I've still got. So what came with the kit is the thumb throttle with the power button and the battery indicator. It's a very basic battery indicator. There's no display with this kit, well, not surprising because it's quite a cheap kit. Uh, and also the brake handles uh, with um, little with wires coming out to to handle telling the controller that when the brakes being pressed, uh, and that's a one on each side, obviously. Uh, uh, and then just putting back everything else that I wanted on the on the handlebars. Now I've fitted the bike kit to my bike. I'm going to try, try it out using these lithium polymer batteries. Uh, each one's normally 11.1 volts, uh, but together uh, fully charged. They come up to just over 50 volts. Um, probably putting batteries like this in series is a bit tricky. So it's probably best to have an actual assembled battery, uh, which you don't have to keep assembling each time you want to want to use it. Uh, with the kit, it came with this connector to connect the battery to the actual e-bike kit. Under this cover, you've got pins under there. That's one bit of the kit that I don't like is that because it's supplying the voltage, it should really be a socket rather than the rather than the plug type thing. Uh, but I'll use that. It's got a fusing line, and I've put one of these uh, connectors on to connect my series batteries into it. It came with these tags on it, but again, I don't like those because I don't want things like that floating around. They're hard, it's a bit hard, difficult to insulate those. Um, so putting a proper battery connector on is probably a bit more helpful. I've come to fit the cadence sensor, which should go here, so go around there, and then there should be a locking nut here to, to tighten it up. Uh, but my bottom bracket doesn't have a locking nut, so I've ordered one. Hopefully there's enough threads there to actually fit it and lock, lock that down. Uh, but as it happens, you don't actually need the cadence sensor. If you're using the thumb throttle, it ignores the presence of the cadence sensor anyway, so you can just use the thumb thr throttle uh, and You'll be okay this is just for pedal assist so if you weren't using the thumb throttle it, you whilst you pedal it will then assist you with extra power from the motor so i've cable tied some rubber matting around the cables that come in through the back rack uh, in order to prevent them from chafe chafing and going through the insulation on on the uh, aluminium uh, this single white cable in this particular kit uh, if it's connected then it restricts the upper speed to 15 miles an hour to be illegal in the UK on the road uh, but if you're going to use it off-road or you've got private land you want to use on then you can disconnect that and if you just, just leave that disconnected you get the full one kilowatt output of the front motor and you can go up to well it reckons around just under 30 miles an hour but I don't know how true that would be. So with the lithium polymer battery I showed earlier I went out and uh, did a test ride for about five miles uh, and that seemed to work okay. So I, on eBay I ordered one of these, which is a 48 volt, 480 watt battery. Uh, and because it's all, it comes as one piece and it has a battery management system built in, it comes with a charger as well. Uh, and it, it comes in a case, and it, so it makes it, makes perfect sense to actually buy one like that rather than try and make one. Uh, because it can, at 200 pounds, uh, you wouldn't be able to make anything like that uh, out of like component parts. Uh, and that and I, I've taken this out and I've done 20 miles on it. Um, I got so going between 20 and 25 miles an hour typically 
Uh, I went 20 miles and at that point it went flat. So I got 20 mile range that was going quite, quite hard and doing some pretty steep uphills as well. On steep uphills, I was getting about 15 miles an hour. So I mounted the battery um, on top of, because it's five kilos, on top of the parcel shelf uh, where I had the controller before and then I put the controller underneath the parcel shelf using some 3D printed uh, mounting brackets. Finally, I'm going to show a bit where I went out on the road and um, I just did something, I just opened up the throttle uh, and because it's front wheel drive, I, tr I tried my best to hold, uh, hold the camera in front of the uh, speedometer just to show the acceleration without pedaling uh, from standstill up to full, full speed. Uh, like I said, it's a bit shaky, but um, it's, the, uh, it's a demonstration of the acceleration.